Good afternoon, good afternoon. I'm too scared to show you my face because guess who's about to walk out in front of the road? We have a leopard. Hello, and with those tatty ears, straight away I think it's Mr. Mvula. But as he disappears in the long grass, let me very quickly get some housekeeping out of the way. Woo, hi, what? What a great start. My name is Taylor and on camera with me today is of course Sebastian and he's bringing you all this wonderful footage and how incredible is that. I can't believe we've just had a leopard to start it off. We had a squirrel jump from the top of a silver cluster leaf, the largest distance I've ever seen before, crash down and land on the floor. My goodness. So if you have any questions for us on this live and interactive safari hashtag safari live on twitter and well this is so exciting off we go right there's no no waiting to um to get into the off-roading this afternoon but it's not me just out and about of course you've already met ali and her they're also driving around but you'll meet them a little bit later let's go and see a bit more of this leopard now whew, that's probably one of the most exciting starts i've had here yet at safari live and here's the leopard now I'm quite a big boy, but like I said, with those very, very tatty ears, they stand out like an absolute sore thumb. And being in this area, plus we know that Tingana is on a warthog kill in Chitwa Chitwa. It was seen this morning on the Sunrise Safari with Ali and Khert, as well as Tandi being around and Kuchava also lurking about in the area. So my goodness, so that's the third leopard for the day. And it seems as though our old man even though I say he's an old man, he's not that old. But I always just think of him as um, more senior to Tungana. He's looking for something to eat. And he's chosen a very, very, very good day to go about hunting. It's nice and cool. It's not too warm. And with this wind rustling, it's a predator's dream. Ideal conditions. You've seen how easily he's able to maneuver through the grass. He's not worrying about where he's putting his feet because the wind will cover up any rustling that is caused by the grass or if he stands and crunches down on a leaf. Now I hope you are all sending in questions and all these types of things. Very exciting. Now no one likes me, I don't like your name very much because I can't think that that's true. I'm sure somebody likes you. <laughs> You're wondering how old this leopard is. I think he's around, if I'm not mistaken, nine or ten, but maybe you can correct me. I haven't seen him Vula for um, I don't even know, months? Maybe at the beginning of the, the year was the last time that I got to see him. Maybe even last year. It's been that long ago, so I have actually forgotten. But he, he's not a particularly young leopard, but not quite as old as Karula. But let's keep up with him before he heads down into these drainage lines. Because once he heads down over here, our job is going to become very, very difficult to try and follow him. But we'll do our absolute best. So this is very nice. Whoop. Lots of little shrubs. Where did you go? He's just standing in here. Are you going to lay down now? No, he's changed direction. Okay. Well, luckily for us, it seems as though we were off-roading in this section maybe a couple of months ago at one point. Because there seems to be an old track here. I think he has spotted something up ahead. Because every now and then he stops and he pauses and he, and he has a look. So I want to actually try and stay behind him. We won't be able to get through there, so we'll have to make a way through here. Whew! This is so exciting. My goodness. Alice, did anybody confirm exactly how old uh, Mvula is? If he is about eight or nine? Okay, just be care very careful here. Oh, this is going to be a disaster. Right, we've got thorn trees all over us. Sorry. Sebastian's just grabbing it. Are you ready? Just a knob thorn that has been pushed over by elephants quite some time ago. As we go, had to go through there. All right. I apologize. I'm, I'm just trying to concentrate and keep an eye on him. He is going that way. So we need to try and find a gap to keep up with him. But it's tricky and it's just going to get worse from here, unfortunately. Right, so I believe that he was born, when do you say he was born in 2005? So 12, there he is, he's just in here. 12 is, so he's actually older than what I thought. I don't know why I thought he was only about eight or nine. So he actually, he's an old man then, I suppose. 
He only shows it in his ears. I think the rest of him looks in pretty good nick. He doesn't look as sort of fit as Tingana does. He's definitely the prettier one. And a question from Mercedes, which is, is he still able to mate? Most certainly, of course he is. Now, he's not the dominant leopard in this area anymore. Tingana has taken the rain from him. However, if there are any females in estrus and they're nearby him, he, he's not going to just go, oh, no, I can't mate with them at all. I have to leave it to Tingana. He's the dominant male. He'll try and sneak in as well. And we actually see this quite often. Tingana uh, thinks he's very clever, but I think Mvula is quite smart. Because sometimes you'll see he'll kill something and Tingana will come through. There won't even be an altercation about it. And he'll leave Tingana with a meal and he'll go off and catch something else and then feast upon it, still within the area. It's like he just uh, gives them little treats every now and then or he's, he's paying rent. And <laughs> that's his sort of quota that he's got to give every month. He's got to supply so many antelope to Tingana and they're quite happy moving in between each other. Now, Mom Poli, you're wondering if Mvula has hunted something recently. Uh, he, it didn't look like it. It didn't look like he had a huge belly, but he doesn't look thin either. So he's probably eaten in the last 24 hours, 48 hours or so. And he's looking for his next meal now. I don't know what he spotted. He's smelling something. He keeps putting his nose up towards the sky. And what a beautiful cat. So. He's definitely after something. Again, lots of kudu, lots of Steenbok, Dacre, all those types of things in this area. I'm so glad we decided to come down this way. I was, you know where we were going? We were going to do birding again in the quarry thickets. Right. Let's head up this way. Now, Eddie, as he walked past, you said he, his neck looked swollen. I just had a look at it now as Alice fed me that question. I, I didn't see anything particular. Again, it's, I'm just pushing the small branches of a knob thorn that was pu pushed over. I've also now ripped my pants <laughs> on the thorns. Um, I don't think that his neck looks particularly swollen. He does have quite a large dewlap underneath his chin, which is excess skin. So that could maybe be what you're talking about. But it doesn't really look like that at all. But anyways, we got a bit of off-roading to do to catch up to him. I'm going to send you across to Ali so she can officially say hello and let her know what her plans are.